Hello everyone, Ben here. This is Logan. So we got the world's robot with us and wanted to make a quick explanation video. This robot had some cool features and hopefully you all can potentially learn from it, make it better than us for future games. So first of all, with the drivetrain, eight wheels is really nice. And the idea behind this actually is that with one or with four wheels, you really sink in the tiles a lot. And so eight, by spreading out that load more, you're less sunk in because the more sunk in you are into the tiles, it's like you're driving uphill all game. And actually to make this work, we ran 450 on 3.25 and that is very close to the shaft. So we got these very thin spacers off a of McMaster car, which allow it to work, which is nice. Um, the other thing is these barrier ramps were very nice. So you can go over the barrier from the front just because the sleds, when they hit, it pops up, which was really cool. But you didn't really drive over discs unless you were against the wall. Uh, moving on, intake's pretty standard, floating so we could pick up the discs. The little wheels on the outside kind of helped funnel discs in. They would move up to here into the shooter. So with the flywheel itself, uh, where we ran one-to-one -one with a laser cut cartridge, which was nice. Uh, this is actually packed full of shaft collars. It's one pound total, so it has very nice spin. And we used motor, or wheels as our indexer. And a lot of people ask, how, how did you make that work without a pressure hood? And so just by having a less steep flywheel angle and uh, four of the wheels, it just had more grip and worked, which was nice, just a simpler solution. Uh, there's actually a ratchet for the indexer wheels. So when we spin the intake forward, we're able to do that. But then backwards, uh, it actually engages and indexes. Um, up here we have the angle changer, and this was pretty cool. So we had a flat arc for autonomous. Then when we move it up, uh, we could have a steep and then a middle, just because this little latch went over center. Um, moving on, end game, all of them being low below the field wall was nice for avoiding DQs. This little latch was very nice as well. Uh, this actually was first on the 4082B snail bot. This is their hook, thanks to Eric for the CAD file, and we just beefed it up more. So just for extra safety. And then it launched very well just when you would release this. There it goes. So also low down license plates. Uh, they, they were cool. So from the world stream above, you could kind of see them. And just having the pins to quick swap them is very nice as well. Moving on, we got wedges back here. These were crazy. Um, them being able to hinge was nice when you would drive over the barrier, but just getting under people's drivetrains was insane. So Logan, can you hold the camera? Oh yeah. Thank you. So if you look there, it actually just propped up this old robot right here. So then you're on way less of your drive. Or if you hit them from the side and you try and move this robot forwards and backwards, since they're in between the wheels, it actually holds it in. So you move as like one unit, which was very cool, very nice for defense. Thank you. Um, that's about it for the drive. End game. Deflector is pretty cool. As for our roller mechanism, got the two edge ones, which is nice, not only for your angles and stuff, but also they were cut down, which helped out a little bit, not only for weight savings, but just for having a smaller uh, contact area on the roller. You still had plenty of grip we found with them being half cut, which was cool. We actually did that. So with this little jig, so if you put like your flex wheel in, take a knife, slice, then you have two perfect halves, which is a good way of doing that. Uh, finally, this little mini, mini blocker was pretty cool. It didn't actually bounce end games from our testing, but we put that on there to deceive people. So hopefully they think it would bounce and then not shoot end game at all. Uh, it also blocked discs, which was cool. So 
if there was a lower shooter, say like this old robot. Uh, so helped with defense quite a bit. Everything was pretty much double chained, which really helped out for if a chain broke, we weren't totally screwed. And on that topic, we just tried to reduce a lot of like single point failures, which is why the whole end game hook. One other thing we did is we actually zip tied our battery in every game right around there because people's batteries fall out. And one zip tie only takes like 20 extra seconds to put in. Just the more you can reduce unfortunate things that can happen, the more likely you are to win. That's pretty much it for the mechanical side. We have some sensors here too. Oh yes, so we have a bunch of different distance sensors and they're used to track the disc's position in the robot. So this one right here, it basically counts the discs for when it's shoot. Oh, I just covered the camera. When it's shooting. So it'll basically keep shooting the discs until the sensor reads that there aren't any left. And it just looks at the furthest distance, whatever the value is. And so if we end up just like indexing a disc and it doesn't go all the way, it just indexes it again and again and again until it shoots it. And that's been nice for times that we like uh, index the final disc and it reads that it's done and then it moves on, picks up another disc and then it'll just shoot that one and the one before. So it's very versatile. And another way is through detecting four because you're basically like uh, an autonomous. If you pick up four discs, you're basically screwed. So we did a lot of prevention. So we have this back sensor right here, which basically once it reaches the fourth disc, it kicks out this bottom one immediately. So uh, we just stay under that limit as much as possible. In fact, there's another one down here that reads that fourth disc and then kicks one out up here and then picks up that bottom one. Uh, moving on, we also have for our flywheel, we use feed forward, which is sort of a mix between bang bang and PID. So if it's not within a certain range of its shooting, it just sets it to max power. So we're going as fast as possible. But once it gets within a tight range, we switch over to PID to get those fine adjustments. So onto this autonomous selector, we used a potentiometer. So we can basically just to, uh, select which autonomous we want to run. And then as soon as we start the program, it'll know which one. And this is real nice for, uh, what's it called? For the timed runs. So if I move over to number five, uh, ben, would you like to start the program? Sure. So actually, like you were saying, the time run on the controller, we don't even need a comp switch. And so we can go ahead and start running. Oh, wait, I pressed the wrong button. You can go ahead and run that and just like test your autons. Ah, there it goes, shooting Logan. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. And uh, just for the sake of this video, we have it displaying up here. So we know for sure that it's running slot number five. And that's about it for programming. Just to add on, I actually forgot about the match loader. So this is pretty cool. Drive right up, slide in so we can rapid fire. Very nice for skills. Otherwise, that's about it. Uh, oh, I just forgot one big thing. Sorry, sorry, go for it. Oh, uh, that is a big thing. <laughs> yep, uh, so we've been showing the robot right now completely without tracking wheels. And uh, we actually run zero tracking for match play, but for skills autonomous, we bring these on. And so we screw joint these onto the robot so we can get the full force of odometry. And uh, there's a slot right there to put them in between. Yeah, and that was actually really nice. So Logan could do cool stuff during programming, but during matches, we could go over the barriers without getting stuck. They wouldn't like drop down and get stuck. Also, since this just weighs a pound, robot's a little bit lighter, a little bit better acceleration for matches. So more like relative PID uh, movements were fine for matches, but when you got a full minute, we don't mess around. Yeah. Uh, one other thing actually that remind me of is discs could slide out of, the, out of the robot, which was nice. So if you jumped over the barrier and those discs are there, then you keep driving and they slide out. Same thing actually if there's a roller, and a disc in front of it. Oh no, I got tangled in the string. We hate string. Anyway, uh, it comes back 
and it can just slide in and you can do the roller just fine, which was nice as well. So that's about it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. Do you have anything else to add, Logan? Uh, I think that's it. All right, thank you guys. And best of luck in the next season. Oh, one final thing we forgot. Actually, if you look all over the robot, we have these little black lines and they're everywhere. You can see on all the screws. And these actually let us know at a glance if something got loose or not. So just by drawing that little line. So for example, the marks line up right now, we know that screw is tight. If though, it were to get a little bit loose, now they don't line up, we know, oh, gotta tighten that screw. And there we go.